Coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, what in the world is going on with Jimmy G's foot? Is he going to be playing for the Raiders in 2023? That and a whole lot more comes up on Tuesday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast for May 30th, 2023. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. The autumn wind is a Raider. Pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. And won. And won. And won. And welcome in Raider Nation to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get podcasts to get the latest edition of the show, of course, as soon as it drops. And if you're checking us out on YouTube, that's because of my guy Ari. He does a great job each and every day making sure we're looking good and sounding good on YouTube. Many thanks to Ari. You can check him out on Twitter at Ari Produces. You can always hit me up on Twitter as well at your boy Q254. And you can chime in on the Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line at 707 654 Four six nine three. As a matter of fact, coming up in segment number three, your calls, your texts, and even a long tweet that we got. Uh, that all come up in segment number three. Again, your feedback. Always appreciate that. Segment number two, what I think the Raiders did wrong in the offseason. The misstep I think that they made, Dave Ziegler and company made, in the offseason. That'll be segment number two here. Segment number one, all things Jimmy G as we do the news and notes of the day. And, of course, all Memorial Day weekend, it was all about Jimmy G and what in the world is going on with his foot and is he ever going to be available for the Raiders to be the starting quarterback? That is one big question. Hopefully everyone had a great Memorial Day weekend. Hopefully everyone had a great Memorial Day and still realized why we were off on Monday, why we were celebrating that and took time to reflect and honor the ones that we lost. And, of course, shout out to all the veterans as well. You know, we definitely want to make sure we always show love to our vets and uh, every Everyone who's participated in the armed forces to allow people like myself and you to do what we want to do each and every day and feel very free about that situation. But of course, Memorial Day is always to honor the ones that we lost as they were serving our country. So hopefully everyone had a chance to do that on Monday. Didn't have a radio show, but I might as well. It was so busy. There was so much conversation. People were tweeting at me. Some people were texting at me. I was on multiple radio shows. I was on Sirius XM Radio with Michael Fabiano and Bob Harris. I was on 104.3 The Fan in Denver with Matt Smith and Sean Marino. Yeah, that Sean Marino, former uh, NFL player, former NFL running back, former Bronco running back, Sean Marino. But everyone wanted to know what was going on with Jimmy G, his failed physical. Is he going to be available for the Raiders at all? Like, there was a conversation we had last Thursday uh, after OTAs when and, uh, when Josh McDaniel said he wasn't cleared for activities yet. And really, the thought coming out of that was, okay, he'll probably be ready for training camp, but they'll be good to go and nothing worried. And look, nobody said that he's not. I mean, let's go ahead and put it out there first. Nobody's saying he's not going to be available for training camp, but after you start reading about the different surgery that he had on his foot and the different clauses that were put into his contract just to allow him to even uh, have an opportunity to sign a contract with the Raiders, it makes it feel like, at least to me, that it's a lot more serious than I even believed as of last week. So Mike Florio from Pro Football Talk did a really good job putting out a piece over the weekend, and that's what really caught a lot of attention. Ian Rappaport from NFL Network also put out some. Jason from uh, out overthecap.com uh, also put out some pieces, but really the big piece came from Mike Florio, who, by the way, will be a guest on my radio show this afternoon at 2.05, really starting everything off on Unnecessary Roughness to kind of deep dive and explain this a little bit further and what his understanding of Jimmy G and his contract, but he put out a piece on Pro Football Talk. Remember when the Raiders delayed Jimmy Garoppolo's introductory press conference and everyone said there was nothing to see here? There was something to see. He failed his physical, and his contract was dramatically reworked because of it. And again, uh, the piece says Jimmy Garoppolo's contract includes waiver over foot injury. So that was the big headline. But you start to deep dive into the piece. It says the contract preserves the team ability to terminate the agreement with no further obligation for any re reason related to the waiver and release attachment as addendum G. Uh, and, and it kind of goes on to say if uh, Garoppolo fails his physical, if he doesn't pass a physical by the time the season starts, the Raiders could move on at no cost. As originally negotiated, and this is also part of the piece, Garoppolo had $11.25 million signing bonus and a base salary of the same thing, $11.25 million for 2023. That foot injury resulted in the Raiders removing that signing bonus with the full $22.5 million becoming a base salary in 2023. And again, won't get any of it until he passes a physical. And there is an opportunity, worst case scenario, and again, this is the worst case scenario, the Raiders don't think this is what's going to happen, but in the worst case scenario, he gets nothing 
from the Raiders. Never gets a penny, and he hasn't received a penny as of yet. So what is Addendum G? The clause is called Addendum G. It's a waiver and a release. The clause says that without the waiver, Garoppolo would not have passed his physical to sign with the Raiders, according to a copy of the addendum obtained by NFL Network, because of a pre-existing metal and middle cuneiform and a fracture of the base of the second metatarsal in the player's left foot. In the clause, this goes on to read, Garoppolo acknowledges the risk of further injury while playing football, including permanent disability, loss of motion, and other problems related to his left foot. Garoppolo reportedly waives all responsibility from the Raiders, NFL, and other related parties regarding his foot condition. The elimination of the signing bonus and the presence of Addendum G explains the delay in getting the deal done, and it underscores the possibility that Garoppolo might not never play for the Raiders, and he might not ever get paid a penny by them. Again, that's the piece in Pro Football Talk, and that just kind of lets you know how serious this foot injury really is. And I know some people are saying that the surgery was just a minor cleanup and he'll be good to go. And maybe they're right. But I tell you right now, as mandatory minicamp is right around the corner, June 6th through 8th, uh, I don't expect to see him out there, right? Last week when I was talking about it, I thought, well, maybe there's a chance he's out there for that. Maybe he's, uh, you know, available right before training camp. Now I'm just at the, I'm hoping he's available for training camp. Because if not, who do you roll with? Are you wrong with Brian Hoyer? Is that the guy who's going to be the starting quarterback week one versus Denver? Is it Aiden O'Connell? Is it Chase Garbers? I know there's a lot of conversation out there. Maybe it's Tom Brady, and technically, as he's trying to get approved to be a, a minority owner of the Silver and Black, which has not been approved yet, it still has to be approved by 24 owners. Yeah, he could. There's a lot of hoops that they'd have to go through. They can make that work. But it, to me, it feels like the juices is, is not worth the squeeze. There's so many things that would have to happen for Tom Brady to be the quarterback of the silver and black. So then who? Matt Ryan? You know he's not Atlanta Falcon MVP, Matt Ryan. He's not even probably Indianapolis Colts from a year ago who went into Allegiant Stadium and got the victory over the Raiders, Matt Ryan. I mean, he's really a shell of himself. Carson Wentz, I know Michael Fabiano on, on Sirius XM when he had me on the radio, he said, hey, is Carson Wentz going to be the quarterback of the Raiders in 2023? I was like, hell no, <laughs> right? You know who Carson Wentz is. Carson Wentz hasn't been good since he left Philadelphia, right? I mean, if you're going to go in that route, you might as well go Brian Hoyer, you might as well drop Aiden O'Connell in there. I mean, what, like, what are you doing? You don't, you don't want Carson Wentz. None of those guys have any familiarity with Josh McDaniels. Cam Newton has uh, familiarity, but do you want Cam? I was thinking maybe as a backup, but obviously that ship has sailed, so no. You know, the only guy that's really familiar with Josh McDaniels is in Denver now, in Jared Stidham. So it just leads me to believe there's so many questions that this leaves for me, right? I have more questions than I have answers. And that's the biggest problem. And I'm hoping that the Raiders, Dave Ziegler, Josh McDaniels, Champ Kelly, I'm hoping they have the answers. But there are so many questions. Is Jimmy going to be ready for training camp? Is he going to be ready for the start of the regular season? Is there a risk of re-injury? If not Jimmy, then who? Is this year going to be a terrible year for the Raiders and they're going to be picking early in the draft next year? Right? I mean, there's so many different questions. And I know the expectations aren't real high as far as win totals. I think FanDuel has it at maybe seven wins for the Raiders, seven and a half, whatever. That's obviously not a lot. As I went through the schedule, I found a way to get to like nine, right? I felt like the window was anywhere from like seven to ten wins. But, you know, if Jimmy G isn't your quarterback, I don't have any faith in Brian Hoyer, Aiden O'Connell, or Chase Garbers. And Aiden O'Connell, it's not like I don't have any faith because I don't like him. It's just he's a rookie. Right, he's a rookie. What are your real expectations for him? Uh, I, I don't, I don't know what that would be, and so that's that's a big time, real question mark. Uh, I, I just, I feel like there's so many questions, and with the Raiders knowing that Jimmy G had this issue, I mean, they again they signed him back in March, so it's not like you know this just happened after the draft and that they didn't have any opportunity to address that. So, what did they do wrong this off season, in my opinion? Well, we'll talk about that coming up in segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. We'll get into it right after I tell you about Built Bar. And every day I check out the website, Built.com, and they have all kinds of specials going on on puffs and bars and limited time flavors. They got the coconut brownie chunk puff is back. Very vanilla uh, puff, very vanilla bar, peanut butter puff, peanut butter bar, birthday cake puff. They've got something for everyone. And if you're a granola bar person, they've got that as well. Chocolate, coconut, granola, chocolate, peanut butter, granola. Those are all available. They've got the brownie bites. They've got the peanut butter balls. They've got the OG flavors, just the old regular uh, built bars like salted caramel, coconut, cookies and cream. Whatever your flavor that you desire, they've got there for you. And now it's getting hot outside. It's, it's summer's kicking in or it's about to kick in. You know, after Memorial Day, it's like the, a lot of people's beginning of summer. 
you want to have that snack that could fuel you. You know, you want to be able to have that protein in your body. If you're out and about throughout the course of the day and you might be out in the sun and you need that snack, Built Bar is perfect for you. So very low in calories, very low in sugar, high in protein, high in great taste. Check them out today, Built.com. Use that promo code LOCKEDON15. You'll save 15% off your order when you go to check out. Again, Built.com, promo code LOCKEDON15. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Want to talk about what mistake I believe that the Raiders have made this offseason. And it's funny because Bill Barnwell from ESPN, good friend of the show, he uh, he put out a piece uh, late last week talking about different mistakes that he felt uh, that organizations made, you know, who had a worse offseason. And I didn't read that piece yet, but it's crazy. After hearing all the Jimmy G news over the Memorial Day weekend, I thought, man, I realize, realize what mistake the Raiders made, or at least what I believe they made in my mind. And I'll, I'll break it down right here. They didn't find their quarterback of the future. And why I say that is because with all this Jimmy G news, knowing that he had to have a clause to even be able to sign him to the contract, knowing that they haven't even paid him a dime yet, and there's a chance, again, worst case scenario, that they never pay him a dime and he never, ever suits up for the silver and black. Like, that's a possibility. Again, it's a small possibility. I don't believe that the Raiders think that that's going to happen, but that is one of the, one of the uh, you know, possibilities that could happen with Jimmy G and this foot injury, depending on, you know, if he's able to rehab it and, and come back and, and be able to play. That, that, that's going to be the big question mark. And again, I'm not even looking at mandatory minicamp now. I'm just looking at training camp. So what we know that the Raiders did in the offseason is go out and make the effort to come to an agreement with Jimmy G. That was as soon as the legal tampering period opened up. That was the first uh, job that they had to get done, right? Boom. That was uh, done immediately. And then we all know how it went from there. They went out and they signed Brian Hoyer. Uh, they went out and drafted Aiden O'Connell. And Chase Garbers was already on the roster, and they let Jared Stidham go. So multiple things here. They didn't identify their quarterback of the future, in my opinion, unless you believe that Aiden O'Connell is the guy. And maybe he is, right? I don't want to slight him. He was the fourth-round pick out of Purdue. Maybe he is the guy. But – for all intents and purposes, where I'm at, I look at him as a, as a backup. And if he's anything else than a backup, then I, I'm wrong, and that's okay. But we do know for a fact the Raiders tried to trade up to the number one spot in the draft, and that was obviously to go get Bryce Young. That didn't happen. Carolina made the trade. The Raiders didn't. They didn't go after C.J. Stroud. They didn't go after Anthony Richardson. They didn't go after Will Levis. They, they waited for the fourth round to go get their quarterback. And, again, maybe they just didn't have any faith in the other guys, and maybe they do have faith in Aiden O'Connell. But to me, knowing Jimmy G, knowing, one, his injury history, but knowing the, the, what was going on, I mean, they knew what was happening. They knew he had to have surgery. I didn't know he had to have surgery. And, you know, and that's my fault. When they pushed back his press conference a, a day, you know, we were told it was dotting I's and crossing T's. It was no, well, he had to, you know, he's going to have to have surgery. His, uh, he's not passing his physical. We had to put a, a clause in his contract. Like, none of that, right? It was just dotting I's and crossing T's, real ho-hum and nothing to see here. Whereas Mike Florio pointed out there was. So if they knew that going in in March, why wasn't there a bigger effort? to go and get a quarterback that they really did believe in, knowing that they had a team with Devontae Adams, with Hunter Renfro, with Josh Jacobs, with Jacoby Myers, right? They have an offense that looks like it could be really good, but does Brian Hoyer, is that the guy that you get excited about? Not me, right? And, and I, just, I just think that they needed to go out and really address that issue, especially even if Jimmy was healthy, just because that his injury history, everyone knows that, you know, he's only played one full season, one year of his career. So uh, we can look at it and say, oh, well, that's just 49er quarterbacks. They get injured and banged up, and Jimmy's going to be fine. And then all of a sudden we find out the news that we found out over uh, Memorial Day weekend and just kind of, you know, takes me back to really, I mean, I know that they didn't want to give a bunch of draft capital. I didn't disagree with that idea, right? It's like, it's, it's crazy. It's kind of, to me, feels like they're in a, in a bad position. To move up and trade up, they would have had to give up a lot of capital. So I didn't have a problem with them not doing it, but I also didn't know the, the information that they knew about Jimmy and this foot. So I really think it should have been an effort to go and get their quarterback, unless they're just looking at this season and saying, you know what, whatever happens this season happens, we'll be picking really high in 2024's draft, and then we'll go get our quarterback of the future. Like, that could be a real possibility. And if it is, it's unfair to Raider Nation. It really is, because the fan base, as, I've, as I know and you know, the fan base is so faithful and so loyal and so desperately wants to see a winner. If they're looking at this season like, oh, this is just going to basically be, you know, a wash, 
we're going to be terrible, and we're going to pick early in the draft and go get our quarterback of the future next year. That's, I mean, that's just a kick in the stones to Raider Nation, right? And it, it could be something that they're doing. I don't know that. You know, and, and this could all be an overreaction because Jimmy G could end up being healthy for training camp, and this could all be a moot point. But what if it's not? What if he's not ready for training camp? What if he's not ready for the start of the regular season? What if he doesn't ever play for the team because he doesn't pass a physical? And then all of a sudden you're going in, you're starting quarterbacks, Brian Hoyer. I was talking about uh, Jimmy G being ranked 24th last week by Pro Football Focus. Where the hell do you think Brian Hoyer's ranked? <laughs> it ain't 32nd, right? I mean, he would be like 35th or 36th, right? I mean, he's not, you know, what, what kind of starting quarterback, caliber quarterback is he? He's a guy that you want starting, you know, two games, three games max. And maybe by that time they make way for Aiden O'Connell. And maybe he's the truth. Maybe we're talking about six months from now, wow, the Raiders do have their guy in Aiden O'Connell. I just have to see it before I, before I believe it because I, I, just, I just don't know. I know there's some people like my guy uh, Nate from Cali who's very high on Aiden O'Connell. There's some people that believe that this dude can get it done, and maybe he can. But that's a lot of faith that you're having in a fourth-round draft pick if Jimmy G can't go, right? And I'm just not willing to have that much faith in that guy just right now. If it's a first-round pick, your, your expectations are higher. My expectations for a fourth-round pick is not he's going to end up being the franchise quarterback. And the problem with this is it's like the Brock Purdy effect. Brock Purdy went in there as Mr. Irrelevant, the last pick in the 2022 draft, and then out, went out there and, and played well for San Francisco. So now everyone feels like, well, hey, you can get a, a, a starting quarterback anywhere. You know, you might, it's almost like a running back. You can get a starting quarterback anywhere. Even if you get him in the seventh round, that could be the franchise guy because look what Brock Purdy did. But I'll tell you what, Brock Purdy at Iowa State, I, I believed in him then. I remember him at Iowa State, and I thought, you know what, this is a pretty stinking good quarterback. He's not too bad at all. Had a nice little run game, nice little defense there. You know, Matt Campbell's a really good head coach. He's a guy that's been talked to by many NFL teams. So I thought he had a little something, something going on at Iowa State. I just don't know. And it's my fault because I didn't see enough Purdue football if that could be Aiden O'Connell. So all of a sudden, we could be going into next season or next offseason talking about, well, all right, what, what position are the Raiders picking at? Where are they at? Are they in position to go get their quarterback of the future? And that would be unfortunate. So if they knew this, which obviously they did because they put the clause in the contract, if they knew this about Jimmy G, I think the effort to go get their franchise quarterback should have been more. I really do. All right? I think that that should have been one of those big-time priorities. And I remember when I asked Dave Ziegler, the GM, at the owners' meetings in Phoenix, I said, what does having Jimmy G on the roster do for you? And he said, it makes us not desperate. Well, that's a healthy Jimmy G is not desperate. He wasn't healthy when I had talked to Dave Ziegler at the owners' meetings in Phoenix. He's not healthy now. <laughs> so, right? So you kind of are desperate. So I know that they don't want to show their hand. I know they don't want to overpay. I, I've, I've credited Dave Ziegler for being very disciplined, and I still will. But I think that that could have been a mistake, that they didn't get a little desperate and try to go get their guy. I really think that they probably should have found a guy that they believed in to be their franchise quarterback, whether it was Bryce Young. Obviously, they didn't get the first pick. Carolina got it. If they believed in C.J. Stroud, maybe they should have made a, a, a bigger effort to go get C.J. Stroud. Right? I don't know if Anthony Richardson was even on their radar. I have no idea. Will Levis, none of that. But Hendon Hooker, I thought Hendon Hooker was going to end up a Raider uh, when they were getting ready to get to pick number 70, and then Detroit took him at, what, 68? So I thought maybe Hendon Hooker was going to be that guy. But th it just didn't seem like the extra effort to go get that quarterback of the future was there. Again, unless Aiden O'Connell ends up being that dude. And if he does, then that's my bad because I just didn't see it coming. But, again, that's a lot to uh, expect. Like, Brock Purdy didn't go in. He didn't get drafted by the 49ers in 2022 as a seventh-round pick. Mr. Irrelevant and say, and, that, and 49er fans say, hey, that's going to be the guy. Right? And people have floated the idea, of, how about Trey Lance, Q? How about Trey Lance? What has Trey Lance done in the league except for be, be injured? I, I just don't see the Raiders making a move for Trey Lance either. I think that – Worst case scenario, if Jimmy G never plays, I think they're going to ride the hand that they have right now, whoever that is, whether that's Hoyer, O'Connell, Garbers, whatever the case may be, and then address their quarterback next year. And that'll, that'll be, <laughs> I want to say it'll suck. I mean, it'll just be a, a, a very unfortunate season, a season that's not as fun as what everyone would love. And again, what everyone deserves, who is Raider Nation, because they deserve to have a winning team. And if those are the quarterbacks that are starting in 2023, more likely than not, they're not going to have a big-time winning season, and that's just the reality of it. Coming up in segment number three, your calls, your texts, and even a tweet. 
707-654-4693, the Locked On Raiders podcast. Segment number three comes up next. Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Your calls, your texts, even got a tweet. 707-654-4693. That's the Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line. And if you want to tweet at me, you can at your boy Q254 like my guy Raider Arsenal did. It's a very lengthy tweet, but, uh, but, but roll with me here. He says, hey, Q. Wanted to send you a message to say I really enjoyed the Locked On podcast today, which was Monday. I hope you don't mind reading this on air, but I just wanted to say I really enjoyed your appreciation of your services uh, uh, and your service people who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. I know you know I'm from the United Kingdom, but you may not know I served in the British Army. Army. I served in the 1st Battalion Irish Guards, a British infantry unit, and worked alongside American troops during Operation uh, Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom. We have a strong connection between our militaries. I can recall many times when we were when we were working closely. There are times without the support of your military, more of our guys would not have come home. I can personally remember air cover being provided by the Americans. Not sure if it was USAF or if it was the Marines at the Basra Air Station coming to our rescue. Sorry, I probably messed that up. Whenever I connect with members of Raider Nation that put on their profiles that they are veterans, I try to message them and thank them for their service. They're always polite enough to return the message and thank me too. I think that's one thing the British and Americans have in common is a proud connection to their armed forces throughout through sport. I think the NFL does an amazingly well job, and one of the highlights of my year every year is, saying the, is seeing the flyover at the Super Bowl. I have a Raiders NFL Salute to Services hoodie that I wear a lot. I want to extend my gratitude to all the American Armed Forces and on Memorial Day weekend, especially to our Gold Star families. Thank you for your service and thank you for your sacrifice. Again, thank you. That's from Raider Arsenal. Again, he's, uh, he is from the United Kingdom, and he also served in the British Army. So I thought that that was a really good tweet that he sent to me uh, on Monday, and I definitely appreciate that. I'm glad that you enjoyed the show, and uh, definitely want to make sure we honor uh, our fallen soldiers on Memorial Day and also uh, pay respects and dues to all our veterans that are out there as well. So thank you so much for that tweet. I appreciate you. Uh, now we got a call from Raider Meatloaf. He's calling to ask, if not Jimmy G, then maybe Tom Brady? Here he is, Raider Meatloaf. Hey, what's up, Q? Um, what's up, Raider Nation? It's Raider Meatloaf here. Um, just just some uh, food, food for thought right now with, you know, all, all I think all the talk this week is going to be about Jimmy G's ankle, the surgery, him not being ready for season. But is there a possibility that Tom Brady could play for the Raiders? Um, it's just looking like everything might be pointing to that direction of maybe that happening, but want to get your thought on that cue. Um, take care, man. Thank you for the call, my man. I appreciate you. And yeah, as I mentioned in segment one, Brady's a possibility. My guy Vinny Bonsignor has a piece that he wrote on the RJ, the review journal. It would take a lot. 24 owners would have to approve him to be an owner player. Uh, if they want to approve that, if they want to say that he can only be an owner, they could say that he has to be fully retired. Uh, he could have to sell part of his or sell his ownership shares if he ends up getting approved for that. Like there are so many different scenarios that would come down to, well, this is how Tom Brady becomes uh, a quarterback of the silver and black. I just I don't see that happening. If anything, I would say that, OK, they're going to put that that's that sell on hold and he'll just come out of retirement and then play for the Raiders like that would be. That would be the way to do it if that's how he's going to do it. But I, I just – I kind of don't see that happening. I think that that would be a uh, super long shot. So thank you for that call. I do appreciate you. Next up, got a text from Raider Myth. It says, yo, Q, it's Raider Myth. First time texting into the show. Hope all is well, dog. With Jimmy doing what Jimmy does best and being still hurt with the possibility of the Raiders needing to move on quick, I would trade for Trey Lance – or would Trey Lance be a good pickup? I believe he could still be uh, able to develop with us. I also think Carson Wentz would be an okay as well. But here we go, another carousel of quarterbacks, just like before we had Carr. I hope it doesn't lead to that, and we could just have a decent stud at quarterback to make us uh, our high potential offense, in my opinion. I really don't miss those times of quarterback after quarterback and coach after coach, but I hope we can somehow find a way to be stay sturdy at that position. All love from the 408. Go Raiders. That's Raider Myth. And, yeah, that's the one thing you don't want. You don't want to have that quarterback carousel. When they moved on from Derek Carr, one of the things I said is, okay, that was their move. So they can't just have a plan. They've got to have the plan. And I honestly could, can't tell you right now, Raider Nation, what the plan is for the quarterback position. That's something that I talked about in segment number two, and that's something that I think they missed on is showing what the plan is for the long term for the Raiders quarterback, not the short term, which we all know that's what Jimmy G was to begin with, was short term. What is the long-term plan? Is it Aiden O'Connell? Maybe. 
It's a lot to expect out of a fourth-round pick. So thank you so much for that text. I do appreciate you. Up next, got a call from Nate from the 626. He's calling to talk about reading comments from so-called lifelong Raider fans. He's pretty fired up. Here he is, Nate from the 626. What up, Q? It's your boy Nate from the 626. Just calling in to see what's good. I'm going to fire off on the hip on this one. I've been on YouTube lately and been seeing a lot of things, like a lot of reports. You know, being a Raider fan and all, uh, following a bunch of Raider channels, you get a lot of um, you get a lot of content you know, surrounding the Raiders, i.e., you know, Derek Carr, you know, John Gruden signing, um, helping out the Saints and whatnot. And one thing that's been kind of irritating me lately is, you know, I read the comments and a bunch of these so-called lifelong Raider fans jumping ship. The, I'm a, I've been a lifelong Raider fan for 60 years and, uh, you know, I just, I, I, I'm, I'm going to follow, basically I'm going, I'm going to be a Saints fan now. And it's like, you know, for one, then obviously you're not a fan. If you're going to jump shit that easy for one dude, one dude, and I'm not going to bash DC because, you know, I have a lot of respect for that dude, but let's just be honest. Let's just look at it. Didn't win anything, nothing, not one playoff game. He only played in one playoff game. In 2016 when they had that run, which I do think that they would have went to the Super Bowl that year, he didn't do nothing. He got hurt, you know. Mind you, they say like, how, how can I, how can I say? I don't know. It's just, it's just really irritating how like a bunch of fans, so-called fans, are gonna follow one dude to a different organization when they didn't accomplish anything. You know, look at the Chiefs. As much as I hate the Chiefs, who did they have last year? They didn't have anybody. They had Patrick Mahomes. Who was their number one wide receiver? Juju Smith. Who's our number one wide receiver? Come on. There is no comparison. So if you can't win with Devontae Adams, I mean, if you go to the NFC South, you know, you're playing with all them dudes. If you win, if you don't win, then that's just an embarrassment because, to be honest, I think that NFC South is the bottom of the barrel division and nothing compared to the AFC West. I'll tell you that right now, especially if they have the Raiders number four with all the talent that we have going on. I don't know. I just think some some dudes are are, are, are ridiculous. Like me. Raiders till I die, Raiders to Mars. I hope you have a good day. Raider Nation for life. Oh, yeah, and by the way, there is no such thing as who that nation or whatever it is. What does that even mean? Thank you so much for the call, my man. I appreciate you, and you're right. It's it's kind of crazy that all the great players that the Raiders have had in the history of the Raiders, like the most polarizing guy, no joke, is Derek Carr. And I'm not trying to slight him, but it's just like it seems like when you talk about Carr or you see that number four as we just recently experienced, right, all of a sudden it's like it's like a divide down the middle or a split. Like either you're either pro team Carr or you're not, right? And it's just so wild because they've had so many great players in the organization. But there are some fans that say, you know what? Hey, we're going to go, you know, to New Orleans. We're going to follow him to New Orleans. And I get it. That happens. Like, I know a lot of Cowboy fans that stop being Cowboy fans when Jerry Jones filed Tom, fired Tom Landry. They're like, oh, yeah, we're good. Right? I mean, so that happens. But it's it's kind of wild just to see as much as it's been happening. But, again, when you start reading comments, like, on YouTube or Twitter, it's a smaller majority than it feels like. It feels like it's an overwhelming amount. But I don't think it's really as large as it seems. But there are some that are out there. Thanks, Nate, for the call. Appreciate you. Uh, up next, got a text from Taylor in Oregon. Say, what's up, Q? Taylor in Oregon here. Kick return and rule changes are on my mind. Seems like this new rule will minimize concussions for the return, man. But what about the other 21 guys in on the play? Kicking teams still have to run full speed down the field, and return teams still have to block them. This whole change seems like it's designed to spark more offense, and they're trying to disguise it as an injury prevention thing. We're beating a dead horse here, but just wanted to get that thought out. Peace out, Raider Nation. That's Taylor in Oregon. I couldn't agree with you more, my man. I really couldn't. Um, I, they say it's player safety, but as far as I'm concerned, if they, if they wanted to make sure the players were safe, eliminate Thursday night games. You know what I mean? That affects everybody. That doesn't just affect the one unit of the team. That affects everybody. Let, let players not have Thursday night games if you want to start somewhere. But I just, I'm not buying the whole player safety. I do get the concussion thing. I, like, I'm not trying to, you know, like poo-poo in the face of them trying to prevent concussions. And I do know that's a very violent play. But there's a lot of things that they can do outside of just that to try to make players safe. But 
That's what they're saying. That's their story, and they're sticking to it. So thank you so much, Taylor, for that text. We'll close things out with a call from Raider Big C in L.A. He's calling to talk about a couple different subjects. One, that new NFL kickoff rule, and then he also shares a story about the Raiders-Colts game in Vegas last season. Here he is, Raider Big C in L.A. Thank you. It's Raider Big C from L.A. Haven't called in in a while. Just been kind of listening to everything you said, always doing a great job bringing the real news to Raider Nation. I got two subjects I want to talk about. One, the kickoff rule. Just bring in the XFL rules. That's all I got to say. Just bring the XFL, rule, XFL rules for the kickoff. At least we'll get something. Because I agree. It's dumb. Why are you going to bear catch it and give them to the 25-yard line? You know, what's going to happen? They're going to find a loophole, and they're probably going to do a, a pooch kick. Then what? Now you're going to have even more concussions. Because so now you're going to have the kicker kick the ball before the 25-yard line, and now the players are going to be able to get down there quicker just a thought. But my main thought I want to bring up is this. I want to share a story with you of what I encountered when I, last year in the NFL season. I went to that Colts Raider game. That was my one game in Vegas I was able to go to. Well, with my, my pops and my good friends, and we didn't have the outcome that we wanted, obviously. We lost to Jeff Saturday. You know, first time coaching. And it was a disappointing loss. And that was the lowest of lows. But Something crazy happened, and as I was driving back to L.A., you know, we're like, we got to get some food, and went to the In-N-Out Burger. And then you may know which one I'm talking about. It's over there by Raider HQ. Don't know the streets, but it's right around the corner from Raider HQ is where, uh, the In-N-Out we went to. And we just came up with a, an embarrassing loss. And guess who I see in the In-N-Out? Our owner, Mark Davis. And I, I was like, Wow. And nobody around him, just one big bodyguard. And there were other Raider fans in there, but it wasn't as packed. It was like maybe late, you know, I'll probably say like 7 o'clock. But anyways, what I'm trying to get at is this. I guarantee to Mr. Shrive you don't take it. I took my shot. I just said, hey, pleasure to meet you, Mr. Davis. You know, long-time Raider fan. And you can see in his face that he was disappointed, but he guaranteed. And he didn't say the word guarantee, by the way. He just, you can just tell from his voice, like, we're going to do what we can do to get us back to the pinnacle of a Super Bowl champion. And just like that, the man just went off of an embarrassing loss as an owner. And just hearing that and knowing that the vision is there. So that's what I've been doing this season. I've been chilling, relaxing, seeing what's going to happen. And I have faith, Raider Nation. I have faith that this Raider squad will make some noise. Let's just give it a chance and see. Expectations are low, and I think that might be better for Raider Nation. Raider Big C from L.A., out. Thank you so much for the call, my man. I appreciate you. And, yeah, the kickoff rule, in my opinion, is just dumb. <laughs> it's just dumb, right? Don't give them 25 yards. If anything, give them, you know, 15 yards, 20 yards. Like, don't don't incentivize it. Don't make it a, a big time. Like, that's a big advantage. 25 yards, that's a, that's that's good, you know? So if, if you're going to fair catch it after it's, you know, not in the end zone, okay, well, then tell them that they have to take it at the 10. Tell them that they have to take it at the 15. Like, don't don't penalize the kicking team for doing a real, really good job of pinning you deep, right? I mean, you're just basically saying, hey, that was a lot of good work, but oh, well, who cares? We're still going to give them 25. I think that that's dumb. As far as as far as far the story about MD at uh, In-N-Out, it was probably the In-N-Out on Eastern and 215. Uh, he frequents that spot a lot. It's right around the corner from uh, the facility as well. And, you know, the one thing about Mark Davis I've learned is anytime you see him around town, anytime fans run up to him around town and starts talking to him, he embraces them all, takes pictures with them, uh, talks about the Raiders. Like he's fired up at the Aces game. He'll be talking about the Raiders. I mean, he's, he's a genuine good dude, like around town. And, you know, the thing is, is, you know, you're, you're, you're giving that F word, man, faith, right? That's that F word that all Raider nation has been riding with for a very long time, right? There's a, I say it all the time on the show. There's a, big, large portion of the fan base that has never seen the Raiders as a really successful organization. So they're riding on faith. They're riding on faith from others that have been fans for years on top of years that have seen that and tell us. I, I, can, be, I can put us in that, that category too because it's been only a handful of years that I've seen the Raiders as a really good team. And I would love to see them uh, as a successful team for a handful more, like a lot more, right, consistently. It's unfortunate. So, you know, there's two F words we're talking about, faith and frustration. Faith is what Raider Nation has. Frustration is what Raider Nation is building because of all the faithfulness, all the loyalty, and the lack of winning, right? The expectations 
uh, are, are very high for the silver and black, and then the results aren't there. So it's very frustrating. So I understand why uh, you know the fan base gets super fired up and angry because they just want to be rewarded, as they should, for all that faithfulness with some winning. This whole Jimmy G situation, this could already throw a monkey wrench into the 2023 season, and we're not even to June yet. That would really be unfortunate if all of a sudden a massive monkey wrench gets thrown into this season and we're not even to June yet. Think about that, and we'll wrap up the show just like that. That's all I got time for on today's show. Coming up tomorrow, we'll have more news and notes. Who knows where this uh, Jimmy G thing is going to go, what kind of twist it might take, what other information we might find out in between now and then. We'll have more calls and texts throughout that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line and plenty of conversation as well. So until then, Raider Nation, take care of yourself, take care of your family, love on your family. More importantly, as always, just win, baby.